What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So FPL is here, we're all starting to make our first team, so I'm gonna go through my top five tips for picking your FPL team. Let's get straight into it. What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So Harry, FPL Tips here again. We're gonna go through, as I mentioned, my five tips when you are presented with the screen that we've got here, when you're picking your first draft, when you're picking your drafts of FPL, a few basic rules I think you should keep in mind when picking it that will hopefully get you to a respectable place in terms of where your team is that's got a good selection of players in. So there'll be more detail about, in depth about top reasons to pick players, players to avoid later in the season but as we're all starting to build our first teams starting to look at those first drafts I thought this would be the best place to start so when you're presented with a team like this a completely blank, blank screen or you've made your first draft with auto picks for example this is what I think we should be doing so the first one we're going to talk about is tip number one is don't overspend on your goalkeepers so there are a lot of good goalkeepers in in the world in in the Premier League but it doesn't necessarily equate to being good at FPL and it doesn't necessarily mean that we should go picking them. The amount of times I'm sent a team that looks like this and they say oh I can't afford someone like Harry Kane in my team, Mo Salah in my team and I think yeah it's because you have so much money invested in your goalkeepers. 5.5 million and 5.0 million is just too much to be spending. A general rule that I have is 9.5 million tends to be the most that I'd ever spend on goalkeepers so that would be a 5.5 5 goalkeeper and a 4.0 goalkeeper or if you do want two goalkeepers so that you can rotate them for the best fixtures that sort of 5.0 and 4.5 or two 4.5 options I personally don't tend to rotate goalkeepers I think choosing one and setting and forgetting them as, as it's called as it's known is the best way to go so for example in my team at the moment I have Sanchez in at 4.5 and Foster in at 4.0 now I'm spending 8.5 million on goalkeepers and if you compare that to the to the team above that's 2 million extra that I have to spend so that's the difference of, of someone potentially being able to pick Son in their team and I'm picking Harry Kane in my team, for example, like that. Or someone's going for an 8 million midfielder, whereas I'm getting a 10 million midfielder on my team. It does add up and I think it's a mistake that a lot of people make and they think, OK, I need two goalkeepers. One can play some week, one can play the next. They play for a big team. They go for, you know, the Man City goalkeeper, the Liverpool goalkeeper, Alisson and Edison. But... These goalkeepers, yes, they keep clean sheets, but they don't actually often make a lot of saves, which is really important in FPL. Hence why Martinez has done very well recently, hence why Pope has done very well. If you are going to go for keepers like Martinez and Pope at their price, you're best off just having them and then choosing a 4.0 goalkeeper like Foster, like I have. But there are a lot of good cheaper keepers like 5.0 or 4.5, like Sanchez in there, like Gaeta at Crystal Palace, like Dubravka at Newcastle that can do a good job. So... First tip is don't go too heavy on your goalkeepers and not leave yourself enough money to put into the rest of your team. Next tip is have someone on your bench who plays. So don't go in, you know, picking completely 4.5, 4.0 defenders, 4.5 forwards on your bench so that if someone doesn't play, you need them to come off your bench. So as a general rule, most people set up their FBL teams as a sort of 3-4-3. So have you know you have two defenders on your bench and a midfielder for example have one of the midfielders who's going to play so this is likely to be Basuma at 4.5 Romeo at 4.5 Gilmore if he goes to Norwich at 4.5 another nice option or spend five million five and a half on that midfielder and have a starting defender so have a 4.5 defender if there aren't any 4.0 defenders which we don't quite know yet so leave some budget to have some money on your bench it isn't always important you know 30 of the 38 game weeks in a season you won't need your bench but those eight times that you do you'll kick yourself if you don't have anyone and you're getting naught points off your off your bench it is it is worth doing to have someone who can come in if one of your starting players gets injured gets rotated it's also important because it helps in your planning so if your starting player gets injured if you don't have anyone on your bench, you know you're going to have to use a transfer or even take a minus four point hit, which we don't want to be doing early on. So if you've got the likes of Basuma, Romeo or 4.5 defender, even better that you can start for one week while your player comes back to fitness or so you don't have to take a minus four, it really is worth it. So having some players on your bench, it doesn't need to be a lot. You don't need 
six million midfielders on your bench, you know, five and a half mil defenders on your bench, but having someone there that can play is, is worthwhile. But if you're having playing a 3-5-2, you know, you want a big five in cross midfield. There aren't any cheap cheap forwards that are going to play. So having two starting defenders on your bench, for example, a 4.5 and then a 4.0 if we find this one who's going to play, or two 4.5 options is a good way to go so that you don't get caught out having to play a defender with a bad fixture or not having anyone at all in, in your team. So tip number three is don't rely on just one captain. You may have someone like Salah, like Kane, that you think you can captain for the majority of the week, but when they get you know, injured potentially, or there's a chance they get rotated when the Champions League's on, or when they have a difficult fixture, it's good to have someone that you can rely on as a captain. And I don't mean someone like, I don't know, a Mares, a Jack Grealish, a Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who you think is good for points, but they're not players that I particularly want and rely on to captain and I think that I could trust. Um, I'm thinking of the big names like like we've seen with Salah, with Fernandez, with De Bruyne, the likes you've got here. Salah, Trent, Son, Kane, De Bruyne, Fernandez. For me, are probably the big six that we've got and you'd consider putting the captain's armband on. There are others that you could include in here. Um, the likes of Sadio Mane, the likes of Marcus Rashford, maybe Sterling as well. So I've gone with the top six. Now, for example, Salah and Trent, owning both of them doesn't really give you a second option because it's in the same game. The same really with Kane and Son. So I, I would advise advise owning two players from this screen that are not playing for the same team. So Salah and one of the others, Kane and someone else in there. But what it means is, as I said, when there's a difficult fixture, when you're playing against someone who's a top team, you don't necessarily want to be captaining Salah against Man City, for example, or Kane against Liverpool, then it's always good to have that second option. Look at who rotates well. If there's one, for example, Salah and Fernandez both have good opening fixtures, so you should have a good captain on them every single week. So think about things like that, but don't rely almost on one because it's unlikely that one player, however good they are, they return for sort of five game weeks in a row. They're always going to have a tough fixture, an off week. Maybe they get an early sub. Maybe they get rested for something like that. So it's worth having two players that you are confident on on captain. Now, it may be that who you are confident in captaining is different who to who I am. So I like to captain a big name. I tend to keep my captain quite safe. You may be more comfortable captaining someone else, but just think about who you are going to have because that captain does earn you double points. So it is worth really thinking about it as it can, you know, make or break your game week, whoever you've got the armband on. Tip number four is do not over invest in these premium players. So although I've said it's good to have, you know, a couple of these in your team, don't go really heavy on them. Don't start throwing so much money into them that it completely ruins the rest of your team. The amount of times that I get sent teams like you've got on screen, at first glance, they look good. You think, oh yeah, the team on the left has got De Bruyne, it's got Salah, it's got Kane, it's got Fernandez. The team on the right, it's got Trent, it's got Fernandez, it's got Salah in, it's got Son as well, a good front line. But then you look at it in a bit more detail and the team on the left has got three 4.5 defenders and then no one on the bench starting and then you've got Billy Gilmore in there as well if he makes his move to Norwich great but you're still starting him every single week because you don't have anyone on the bench to come in and the team on the right has a very similar situation it's got Basuma starting every week and then you've got sort of 4.0 defenders on there hoping that they play in a, a 4.5 midfielder so don't go too heavy on them that it really destroys the rest of your squad because however many points they score effectively they're having to score for two players because the likes of Basuma and Gilmore although they can tick along two points on your bench you don't really want to be starting them every single week so it's finding that middle ground it's finding that squad balance that you can get is really sort of what a lot of these key points are focusing at if you've got a balanced squad with players on your bench that play aren't going to haul on your bench but they're in there to you know come on occasionally or to rotate you know 4.5 defenders is really the way to go don't go heavily investing in your bench but have some that can come on when there's an injury when there's a bit of rotation is definitely the way that i advise going and if you do that you're in a good place to set up a good sort of first draft and good attempt at, at the season and tip number three is to avoid rotation prone players. So I personally avoid rotation prone players as well as newly promoted or players who are new to the league. So new signings and newly promoted players, you can often find a player for the same price who is more proven in the league and tends to hit the ground running a bit more because they know how the league works. This is often the case with new signings that 
I'd say probably four out of five new signings are not as good when they start as we'd expect them to be or as they were in their previous league. So that's one for me, but we've gone with avoid rotation prone players in there. So a few of them that I've pulled out that I've seen in draft. So Lacazette as a forward, we, we see Aubameyang going up front sometimes. We see Aubameyang on the wing, which makes a Lacazette start, but he doesn't play every game and he's not good enough when he does play to, to warrant a, team, a position in our team, especially at 8.5 million. Mares is another one. Now, Mares and Foden are interesting ones. They should be first choice wingers for Man City, but 9 million for a Man City winger who could easily get benched one game. For me, he's a, he's a no-go. If I'm going to get a Man City player, it will be Kevin De Bruyne because he plays every week. There are some of you that may consider Foden, may consider Mares, and I can see a little bit why, but start of the season, there's going to be enough other headaches, you know, trying to jump on you know, the cheap forward or the cheap midfielder or the big hitter that's doing really well that you maybe don't own, that you don't really want to have to be worrying about your rotation thrown players and whether they start every week. Next up, Sigurdsson. If we see James Rodriguez go, potentially he could be more of an option, but when he plays, you know, he's on penalties, he's on set pieces, he's really good on his day for Everton, but again, he doesn't start every week. Mason Greenwood, again, Sancho coming or Sancho not coming, there are a lot of other options that they have. You know, whether they play Pogba and they play him out wide and they change that diamond formation, whether Cavani plays, whether Martial, who's now going to be back fit, plays. There's a lot of players that could impact the minutes that Greenwood is getting this season. So until I see sustained minutes from him, I'll be going for a more trusted asset in someone like Bruno Fernandes or someone else at his price, like Rafinha, like Jack Grealish, that we know is going to play every week, unlike Greenwood. And others, we've got Cavani. So along with Greenwood, that Manchester United attack does tend to rotate quite a lot, especially when there's European commitments, which won't happen for the first few weeks, but there will still be that. Will Greenwood play? Will Martial get the you know an early sub, for example? They may start most games, but their amount of players that Man you have on their bench to come on will definitely impact him. Pulisic, again, when he plays, he's so capable. He's that quick turn of pace, the finishing that he has, but with the likes of Ziyech, Havertz, Werner, Mount, maybe a new signing, all looking to... to Play in that position at eight millions it's a lot of money to spend the next one is walker who actually i was really excited about his price when he came out when he got dropped down to 5.5 but then again it's the same with a lot of the city players you could go cancelo diaz is probably the only one in that defense you know is going to play every week along with edison in goal but zinchenko whether you've got walker cancelo stones laporte they're all a bit of a rotation risk and given they've had sort of price increases up to the likes of six million this year it's a lot of money to spend on on a rotation prone player so if i was going a man city defender it would be diaz despite his sort of lack of attacking threat and final one we've got is Ben Rama, and this was just generally the West Ham midfielders, the likes of Bowen, the likes of Lanzini, Ben Rama. Even when, if they get um, Jesse Lingard back, he plays most games, but there are a lot of options now in that midfield. Yarmolenko's having a really good Euros, for example. So if Lingard comes back, he'd probably be the one that I'd look at, but without him, there's too many of them. They may look like a good price. A lot of them are 6 million quite a lot cheaper than some of those other assets and if West Ham play like they did last year it could be really tempting to go for them but there will be that rotation if they play a five at the back especially because there's not space for that many of them in the starting 11. On their day they're great assets and we saw them return a lot last season but if they're not starting every week it's just a headache that you're going to have early on that's not worth having so someone like Rafinha or you go for someone like James Will Prowse who's going to play every week is, is a better option in my opinion. So just to summarize those that we've spoken through, don't overspend on your goalkeepers, move that money elsewhere. Someone on your bench who plays, don't just have sort of complete dead wood on your bench. Have someone who can step in, score two points, who has a little bit of attacking threat like Gilmore, like Bissouma. Don't rely on just one captain. So when they have a hard fixture or when they're slightly out of form, you could go to someone else. Don't overinvest in premiums and give yourself an unbalanced squad. So a balanced squad with okay money on the bench is really key to, to your FPL team and it will set you in good stead and tip five avoid rotation bone players and the bonus one that I've thrown in here that I think a lot of people who are particularly new to FPL fall into is good footballers and good players do not mean they're a good FPL pick so I talk about the sort of premium goalkeepers Allison Edison they're great but they often aren't very good picks in terms of FPL. We see the likes of Kante, again, great player, not particularly a good FPL asset. So it's worth considering and trying to see that, okay, you may 
like them watching them play you may think they're a top quality player but FPL is different in the way it scores points it's really about putting the ball in the back of the net assisting and clean sheets you don't have to be a good player to be a good FPL asset and you can be a good player and not be a good FPL asset. So it's worth considering them. And those are my top five tips. There'll be plenty more videos on players to pick using these rules as we go through the season. A bit more detail on how to you know, get a good start to the season, things to avoid. So if you have enjoyed, make sure to join the league code just below me. This is a league for you all for subscribers only. I don't post it on Twitter. So it's for subscribers only. It will have prizes throughout the season for you guys to win. So join that. Um, for subscribers as I said so hit that subscribe button turn on notifications for future videos and hit that like button if you have enjoyed but we'll be back very soon for more videos um, let me know any questions you've got down in the comments about any of this or your teams uh, but I'll be back very soon I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all next time